Okay, I think we'll start now and then I, uh, the people that are joining us will just uh, join us as they uh, enter the, the waiting room. So they're all very welcome to this uh, seminar where we will talk about the gender-based violence manual for helpers in Nepal. My name is Elizabeth Langda. I am the director of Health and Human Rights Info. And we have been fortunate uh, to be a partner of this uh, course, Introduction to Global Mental Health at the University of Bergen with Associate Professor Ragnil Dybdal and Senior Advisor Juni Heltme. We will also thank Professor uh, at the Tribunal, Tribun University, Professor Dr. Saroj Prasad Oja at and from the Department of Psychiatry and Mental Health, Dr. Mita Ran, uh, that have made their students available for this project. We have also been so fortunate that through this collaboration, been working with three students of psychology, Anil Sharma, Gita Limbu, or Alba Banu. Initially, this was a project supposed to be a physical internship, but due to COVID, we had to work online. Uh, and because of this COVID situation, the idea of making a three days online training based on the manual of gender-based violence uh, was developed. Uh, afterwards, we will hear these three brilliant students introduce their work. Initially, I would like, I would have liked uh, to have a, a introduction of everyone participating uh, on this uh, webinar or, or seminar, but we are more than 40 people. So that would take the whole time we have assigned for this. So I, I just want to say very welcome to each and every one. And I hope that we can stay in touch uh, afterwards as well. Um, because I think uh, uh, the work that uh, Anil, Alba, and Gita has made is very useful for uh, local organizations working in Nepal. Mm, I I think I would like Nora before before the Anil, Gita, and Alba starts. I, I would like Nora to say uh, a few words and then. Uh, uh, the students will have approximately half an hour to talk, and then we have room for questions afterwards. Nora, please. I have to close my door. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's, it's a great honor, and first of all, thank you, Elizabeth, and thanks to all of you who have been organizing this event. My name is Nora Sveos. I'm working with the Elizabeth on the HHRI, or MHHRI, as we're now calling it to focus on the importance of mental health work in this in this area. I'm a retired professor of psychology and uh, I've been engaged in human rights violations and what can we offer to deal both to prevent and to rehabilitate and repair when people have been exposed to serious human rights violations. So to be part of this seminar today and to listen to our three eminent students and present their work for, for all of you is just both, a, uh, both an honor and a pleasure. Of course, despite the fact that we know that the theme, the topic, the engagement that we all have is against violence, it's against violations of basic human rights, it's about brutality uh, against women, against children, against men, against all people, so, so it, it, is, it is a gruesome and a tough situation. And unfortunately, it seems that also the pandemic has, part, has been part of, uh, has some responsibility for some violence becoming even, even greater. So the, 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 um, the preparedness you all have to enter into this work and continue strengthening the work against this is so important. So I'm not going to take much more of your the valuable time we have for the seminar. So thank you again, Elizabeth, and welcome to all of you. And we're looking forward to, to listen to and also hope that this means that we can move forward and implement training and practice in everyday life of Nepal too. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Nora. And uh, now I will give uh, the floor to uh, Alba, Anil, and Gita. Please welcome them. They have done a tremendous uh, piece of work here, and I, I'm really looking forward to share this with you. Thank you. Thank you, Anil. Uh, so hello, everyone, again. And I would like to st start by thanking everyone for participating in this webinar and also for your interest in uh, learning more about the Gender-Based Violence Manual for Helpers working in Nepal. So our group, which consists of Anil Sharma, Gita Limbu, and me, my, uh, Alba Bonun, has worked, as you all know, in collaboration with HHRI on this global mental health project. And we are very much looking forward to doing this presentation. So first, I will tell you very shortly about the history behind the project. So Mental Health and Human Rights Info's uh, training manual has been developed for helpers who provide assistance and support to women who survive gender-based violence and sexual trauma during disasters, conflicts, and emergency situations where access to health professionals with psychological or psychiatric expertise is limited and are not from a psychology background. So the main purpose of the manual is to be used in training of helpers uh, to strengthen understanding trauma and practical approaches to assistance. And the COVID-19 situation, uh, as Noah and Ura also mentioned, has created new challenges related to violence and mental health and often made access to mental health services and psychological psychosocial support even less available. So that's some of the background for this uh, training program. There have been a few online trainings, but there is little systematic experience available doing so with this manual, nor with using the manual in online training. And therefore, we were given the task to create such an online manual draft adapted to the Nepalese context uh, to be used in Nepal uh, for future online trainings and also translated to Nepalese. And uh, yes, I will very briefly tap into the working method for our project. And um, then I will give a brief overview of the status of gender-based violence in Nepal, a brief uh, assessment of current needs and resources and uh, resources in Nepal in terms of gender-based uh, violence related mental health including manuals or similar approaches, and also in relation to available resources and experiences on relevant, relevant online trainings and support in Nepal. And afterwards, we will focus on the draft online version of the manual in English and Nepalese, and tell you about the adaptations we have made and the challenges we have made, uh, we've had in the process. So, th so this is what we will present today, and we will hope that you will enjoy our presentation. Uh, so we started the project by agreeing on our terms of reference with Elizabeth Langdahl and uh, Nora Seos. And then we did a brief literature review concerning the needs and resources in Nepal. After that, we, re we reflected and discussed among ourselves in the group on the adaptations that we thought would be appropriate. We made a lot of changes and edits in addition to the adaptations uh, uh, and we have also received valuable feedback, both from Nora and Elizabeth, but also from Prem Batarai from the Nepalese organization Coppola, which was very uh, valuable to us. And simultaneously, as we worked on the editing, Anil and Gita did the whole translation from uh, English to Nepalese. And we are very proud of the result, and we hope that it will be of good use later uh, in Nepal, hopefully by some of you. And uh, yes, we will take a deeper look into this now. So now Gita will take Thank the you, Alva. <laughs> Thank you, Alva. Namaste, everybody. And uh, you are all welcome. And um, I'd be talking about what gender-based violence is. Uh, gender-based violence is a violence directed against a person because of their gender. Uh, both uh, women and men experience gender violence, but majority of the victims are women and girls. Uh, it is um, gender violence is a global issue. 
skills and in developing country like us is even a bigger issue. It is by uh, cutting of um, selective abortion is uh, very common in country like ours, and uh, gender-based violence, uh, like Nora said, is a uh, is a serious human right abuse and a global health, <coughs> public health concern. It is the most pervasive and yet least human right violation, uh, and and uh, it's uh, it's most pro uh, pervasive yet least visible human right violation in the world. In a country like ours, uh, the most common human rights violations are the right to life, right to equal protection under the law, right to equal uh, protection according to humanitarian norms in times of international or, or internal armed conflict. Uh, uh, the right to in human or degrading uh, treatment or punishment, the right to liberty and a security of person, right to high standard attainable of physical and mental health. In Nepal, gender-based violence takes many forms, like in uh, different countries, that includes domestic violence being the <coughs> most common and uh, sexual abuse and uh, torture, rape, and, and plus many other cultural related violence like uh, witchcraft, uh, Zumba, Chopati, and uh, Dukui. Uh, um, uh, Jumba, uh, to, uh, uh, Jumba is a kind of a, uh, tradition uh, in Sherpa families where the second uh, born daughters are uh, sent to the monastery as an offering to ensure uh, well-being of the family. And Duki is another tradition where uh, the families uh, offer the young girls into the temples for some ceremonial purpose. Uh, uh, and uh, and Chopati is another tradition that is uh, seen in mid to far west part of the Nepal, where uh, women are kept out of the out of the house, usually um, uh, living uh, on said or barn during the time of monarchy. Uh, uh, next slide, please. Uh, Gender-based violence can lead to many health issues, uh, uh, both physical and mental, like post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, anxiety, substance abuse, health, self, <coughs> sorry, self-harm and suicidal behavior and sleep disturbances. Uh, and it is even true that uh, women living with severe mental illnesses are significantly more vulnerable and uh, likely to fall victim to violence. According to WHO, it has been um, found that women exposed to intimate partner violence are twice likely to uh, have uh, experienced depression and twice likely to have alcohol use disorder. 16 persons are 16% uh, more likely to have low birth weight uh, babies, 1.5%, uh, sorry, 1.5 times more likely to achieve HIV and 1.5 times more likely to contract any other sexually transmitted diseases. 42% of women who has experienced uh, physical or sexual violence at the hand of partners have experienced injuries. As a result, 38% of all murders of women globally were reported as being committed by the uh, intimate partners. In addition, the survivor of ZVB uh, may also experience stigma and rejection from the community and family. Therefore, preventing gender-based violence is trans, uh, uh, transformational. It provides uh, the health, it improves the health of a woman and children, improves economic productivity and educational attainment and reduce risk of uh, mental illness and substance abuse, among other benefits. It can also help accelerate achievement of the sustainable development goals. Next slide, please. It has been addressed as a policy issues in Nepal since the mid 1990s, but only in uh, 2010, legal and uh, uh, legal and policy framework um, to combat GBB was developed. Domestic Violence Act has identified violence against women as a crime with punishment for perpetrators, but rarely such crimes are reported to concern agencies. According to a study uh, done by a government in uh, uh, government, only 13% of women knew about the law uh, related to domestic violence and that the uh, perpetrator could be punished. Most of the uh, reported case ends up uh, with a uh, signing of a mutual uh, agreement paper, uh, which is uh, 
uh, not bad, but then uh, uh, we, we also saw that uh, uh, there is a lack of follow up and uh, monitoring after that, uh, because many women fear that <clears throat> Uh, reporting uh, would also damage their family and uh, also this uh, and their desire to protect the family uh, uh, there is less of a reporting and uh, uh, prevention and protection is necessary so is re rehabilitation and intervention hence the project project this project with a brief assessment on need and resource was done for the uh, done uh, we interviewed various organizations social workers uh, lawyers and police officials and <clears throat> And as as you can see uh, in the uh, in the uh, graph that uh, you, uh, the prevalence uh, uh, is different in different provinces, and uh, this could be because of the uh, challenges that were uh, uh, said uh, to be that was uh, uh, which lied in uh, solving a uh, gen uh, gender based violence like unequal power emphasizes uh, on uh, male dominance lack of policy uh, policies that be little or attention to gender-based discrimination, lack of reporting, uh, reported case, lack of active, uh, effective uh, monitoring, lack of awareness, lack of fund, and lack of uh, follow-ups, like I said. And, uh, uh, and there is also an implementation gap despite governments and uh, many uh, NGOs and INGOs working for it. We, uh, it it's because a woman uh, lack of awareness of the law and available resources are under use and there is a weak coordination uh, between the multiple sectors and um, and also the reporting uh, time period um, uh, which needs to be revisited it is only 25 days from the time of an incident can we go to the next slide please during this COVID pandemic, um, people are not just dealing with an epidemiological aspect of the disease, but also with the social elements such as violence. Uh, in article published in Nepalese time, there were uh, 176 cases of domestic violence against women in just 18 districts since the lockdown. This, uh, this report is lockdown. Um, uh, the type of violence during the lockdown uh, period include uh, social violence, rape, attempt rape, murder, attempt murder, suicide, attempt suicide, uh, sexual misconduct, and cybercrime, out of which domestic violence was the highest, where the perpetrator were husbands and fam other family members. And most of the victims of uh, violence were uh, um, uh, from the age group of uh, 17 to uh, 25 age group. Uh, COVID has intensified the risk of gender-based violence for women and girls. As we have already seen, 38% of all murders were committed by intimate partners. Despite limited resources, Nepal's uh, gender-based violence uh, service providers have stepped up to ensure girls and women are safe and free. Uh, Nepal uh, National Women uh, Commission has been uh, operating uh, uh, 1145 uh, support helpline and uh, provides uh, critical supports to uh, survival, uh, survival of gender-based violence, which has been funded by World Bank Integrated Platform for Gender-Based Violence Prevention and Response. Uh, and uh, different organizations have been in collaboration with it, uh, Legal Aid and uh, Consultancy Center, CWIN work, uh, CW, uh, Children Workers in Nepal, CWIN, Transcultural Psychosocial Organization, TPO Nepal, and uh, Sathi. This online manual can be a great uh, tool to help uplift that uh, uh, treatment gap. This manual manages protection programs or uh, uh, provide protection service with GVB informed. It has the knowledge skills and compassion required to help gender-based violence survivors. Workers who provide mental health and psychosocial support can uh, cause harm if they do not manage its many sensitive issues uh, professionally. Uh, therefore, guidelines for gender-based violence intervention in humanitarian setting, uh, interagency standing committee have been used um, and 
in addition to um, uh, interagency standing committee, the manual also helps uh, helper uh, familiarize with the four protection principle which the Spears handbook states that protection should do no harm, should provide assistance, should provide uh, protection for violence or coercions, and should help people who are affected by disaster or armed conflict to claim their uh, rights. And during this pandemic, things are going digital like school works and uh, this online training manual for GBV is going to be a great um, training and upscaling and uh, uh, and uh, uh, a great tool to uplift the treatment gap uh, in, uh, here in Nepal. Um, uh, that's from my part, and I'd, uh, Alba will be talking more about our three days uh, training pro uh, program in brief. Thank you. Thank you, Gita. And as I mentioned on the chat, feel free to ask questions in the chat or save them for, uh, for the end. We would like to get some questions. Uh, so I'm not sure how familiar all of you are with the manual, and therefore I will very briefly tell you about the content for the three days training program. So here's the program, program for, for day one. So we start the training the first day with providing information about gender-based violence, human rights, and mental health. Then we tell about the organization Mental Health and Human Rights Info. We focus on the fact that the manual takes a human rights-based approach, and we, go further, and we go further into detail on what this entails. Then the trainers explain how to use the manual so that everyone are on the same page during the training. And then we have the first group exercise, which is meant for the group to get to know each other and also agree on some group rules. And also to have some online adaptations to teamwork and talk about how we can have, for example, confidentiality in teamwork on Zoom. And the participants are also to do a role play where they play the first meeting between the helper and the survivor. And then we provide knowledge regarding trauma and explain the metaphor of the window of tolerance. And after this, the, trainings, the trainers introduce the metaphor of the butterfly woman, which we refer to as Putali, and we will explain this uh, more later. And we try to close each day with a grounding activity and also with some positive remarks to leave on, a good, uh, on the good side. And uh, the program for the second day. And then we also start by doing a grounding exercise. And then we continue with the different stages of the Putali story and digging deeper into identifying trauma reactions, providing knowledge of triggers, trauma reminders, and also flashbacks. Then there is a role play where the participants try how to calm a survivor who has been triggered. And we go through how the butterfly woman experiences triggers and flashbacks sometimes after the trauma. And further on, we explain the process of stabilization and how to ground oneself. So that's the program for day two. And the, uh, day three, this is very like uh, big uh, headlines, but uh, it's good to have some basic knowledge. And the last day of the training uh, course, we focus on how to be a good helper and also how the helper must take care of herself or himself, and not just the survivor. And then we do another exercise, which is called uh, safe, creating a safe place. And after this, we focus on the aspect of reporting and how the helper should respond if the survivor is considering reporting. And further on, we have some self-help strategies in relation to troubled sleep and nightmares. And the last thing we do is ending the story and mentally prepare for the life that follows and repeat some of the most important basic principles with working with survivors of gender-based violence. And we also have some final remarks and, uh, and try to leave the course uh, with uh, positive feelings and uh, good, um, uh, yeah. You know what I mean. <laughs> so this is the basic program for the three days. And now we'll go through some of the adaptations and the challenges we have gone through to make it more adapted to the Nepalese context. And Anil, <clears throat> take the floor. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Alba and Gita, for your part. Uh, uh, so I'll be uh, talking uh, some about that we have adapted the things uh, uh, depending on the context of Nepal. So let's go through that briefly. So yeah, uh, this manual is uh, developed for the purpose of online training. 
So uh, we are restricted inside home due to this COVID pandemic. So that even uh, from uh, distance uh, mode, uh, the helpers can get some knowledge and they can provide to it to the survivors <clears throat> so that we can uplift their mental health. Uh, so we have uh, designed this manual in such a way that, uh, that we have avoided so many technical terms because <clears throat> Helpers might not be from psychology background. They might be from different backgrounds as well. So uh, it is uh, easy to understand if we uh, use some simple terminology. So essential, <clears throat> sorry, the essential aspect is to provide the help. So we have more focus on that portion. And we have uh, uh, adapted in such a way that uh, depending on the cultural context of Nepal, cultural language, and the level of understanding of the people of Nepal. So we did uh, work on that also. And in metaphorical uh, modification, uh, in previously, if you uh, go through the manual, you will see in whole uh, the manual, there is a story of butterfly woman uh, to represent the uh, trauma victim. Uh, so in context of Nepal, in many Nepalese parents uh, used to call their daughters and females as Putali also. They have put, kept their name also. So I think Putali can be relatable <clears throat> to Nepalese context. So Putali means one simple, simply butterfly. So uh, we have changed. Uh, a butterfly woman to Putali. <clears throat> and in cultural uh, uh, modifications, like in uh, one of the picture of trauma victim in original manual, you can there you can see the uh, picture of a woman. So we have uh, uh, used a picture of a woman who is wearing a sural and kurta. So most of the is most of the Nepalese women used to wear that dress in various contexts. So we use that pictures. And in grounding exercise, uh, there is a word uh, buttock in uh, in the exercise. So in many Nepalese uh, context, uh, it is uh, regards as inappropriate in cultural context and mannerless uh, to use this word. So we have uh, removed that word from the original uh, manual. And also there is one most important thing is uh, in Nepalese context, due to various challenges, women are restricted from education, from the job. So they are limited in household work. Uh, so they are not being uh, independent in taking their own decision in life. So we have, uh, uh, during the training part also, we have more focus on decision making ability. If uh, their families exclude them, exclude them after the trauma, after the different incidents. So, so even then condition, they can uh, carry their life independently. They can earn their livelihood. They can make their uh, decision independently. So we have more focus on uh, making decisions so that uh, helpers can help them to uh, make decisions of their life. So we have uh, uh, used music and pictures from different part of Nepal and Nepalese people. Uh, so it was uh, also a challenging part also uh, uh, because uh, the picture from Nepal can be relatable to the Nepalese people, Nepalese helpers, so that they can relate themselves. And we have uh, used some music like uh, uh, national anthem in opening of the uh, ceremony also. So it would be more uh, good to uh, start with that uh, part also. So we have kept that in manual also. So in videos, uh, uh, there are many videos available in English language and in other languages, but uh, depending on the uh, level of education of helper, they might not be, some of them might not be able to understand uh, that language. So we are planning to uh, do voiceover and uh, keeping subtitle in videos so that it can be more easily understood to the people who are working on that also. So it will be <clears throat> available very soon. Uh, so this will be more uh, relatable. And in contextual part also, uh, the incident that happened in our context is more useful for the people to understand the uh, uh, traumatic incident. Uh, so we have worked on that also. And regarding the format, we have uh, used very few texts, uh, uh, like Alva mentioned, who, who were involved in this manual initially, like Prem from Kopila, he has also uh, suggested that using text, uh, using more text was more uh, feel monotonous to the participants so that using more slides, more visual elements more uh, is engaging to the participants so that they can get best out of it. Uh, so we have focused on visual elements rather than text. And regarding the uh, context, it is always good to use like lived experience. Uh, if uh, uh, people from who have been through the same experience of trauma, and same experience of tragedy, if they share their stories, they can really help to motivate that uh, the victims might think that uh, we are not alone. There are so many people who have been through it and come over it. So it uh, provides very positive feedback and positive message to the uh, uh, people. So we have more focused on lived experience. 
And yeah, we all know that uh, in our academic setting and in various setting, we are very unaware about human rights, gender-based violence, and mental health. Uh, many of us may not know uh, the many of the helpers may not know the definitions of these technical terms, and even survivors may not know the uh, definitions of the technical words. So we have very focused on this part also, so that they can understand what is mental health, what is human right uh, right uh, violations, what is human rights, how why it is important, what is gender-based violence. So regarding the mental health also, it is highly stigmatized in our context. It's, we all know that. So there is a very high uh, treatment gap in, in, in our country also. Even in most of the lower and middle income countries, mostly four out of five people won't get any form of treatment due to lack of resource, lack of uh, knowledge regarding the mental health and all those things. So we have very focused on definitions of these uh, terminologies also. Uh, and we have also uh, mentioned about the contextual information regarding uh, reporting as we all know that different province different country uh, have different laws of re reporting regarding the uh, these issues uh, if someone wants to yeah it is very important to get justice for the victims uh, so uh, we have uh, uh, we have tried to incorporate some of the reporting uh, process how uh, they can go to the police stations how they can report also so that were also in included in the manual in the online version. So yeah, as you can see uh, the pictures, so where metaphor means uh, Rupak. So Putali Rupak ko parichai. So metaphors introducing the butterfly woman. So yeah, we have done this. And yeah, this is a very important part of the uh, training is window of tolerance. Uh, it uh, represents the hyper and hypo arousal. So whenever people are uh, above the window, it represents the hyper, hyper arousal. And if they're below the window, it means hypo arousal. And if they are in between, it means they are in the balanced state. So we have changed this window of tolerance to mon ko bad. So where mon means mind and bad means river. So during the uh, changing of this metaphor, we have initially planned that uh, we relate with the, uh, the electricity generation process like whenever there is a proper amount of water in dam then we can generate proper electricity whenever the water uh, level reaches up over the dam so it destroys the dam and whenever it is uh, below the required level it uh, <clears throat> it uh, it cannot generate the electricity so but later while discussing we found that agricultural um, uh, context would be more relevant so most of the people <clears throat> on their livelihood through agriculture and most of the people are <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> in uh, nepal depend on the agriculture so we have uh, changed it into whenever we have proper amount of uh, water we can irrigate uh, to properly to the field so that we can get the proper crops and whenever it uh, reaches over the level of dam it destroys the dam and it destroys the crops also and if it is a very low level then we can also we cannot uh, give water to the fields properly so we cannot get good crops so whenever uh, people are in state of hyper arousal it represents the water level above the dam and uh, below the dam means uh, hypo arousal and whenever we have proper amount of water we can irrigate to the field properly so it represents the normal balanced state so people who have been through the traumatic experience they have uh, they have weaker dam so it destroys easily so they can easily go to uh, hypo arousal and hyper arousal so it's very important uh, metaphor throughout the manual if we go through uh, if we go through the manual uh, we can see it so one uh, is the mind in nepal so mostly people understand in that way so we have uh, used uh, 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 the, this metaphor so it can be relatable and we have tried with this some of the people also they find it very relatable and yeah as we all know that culture influence our every uh, uh, type of living communication the way we form interpersonal relationship uh, so we have uh, considered uh, things like this and even uh, the context of mind and body uh, some of the uh, some of the people think they are different and some of the some of them may, may find uh, mind and body same thing so it is very important to understand the context of the people also and even some of the things that are considered normal in one culture may not be considered in normal in another culture. Also, that's why, uh, due to the different understanding of mind and mind and body, the people uh, express their distress in different way. So we have to consider that also in that time. 
so we have very focused on uh, uh, that part also uh, so as you can see we have uh, you can see nepali font there so that they can understand easily so yeah thank you that's my part now i would like to request alba to talk about some of the challenges we have been through during this project thank you thank you very much anil uh, so we are very soon finishing up this presentation. I will shortly comment on some of the challenges we have faced and uh, some of the lessons learned. I can see that we are running a bit out of time, so I'll do it uh, very shortly. So um, um, there have been some challenges in finding good and recent data and overviews about gender-based violence and resources to helping survivors from the Nepalese context, especially in English for me. Uh, so that was kind of challenging. It was also challenging, challenging to adapt to the Nepalese context in some ways, since there are a lot of cultural and linguistic diversity across different regions in Nepal. For example, differences from the big cities like Kathmandu to the more rural areas like Joomla. Uh, we have also had some issues on finding appropriate pictures and animations uh, for the Nepalese context, especially related to finding easily understandable animations related to psychology and brain functioning. We have a lot of that in English, but it's not so easy to find in Nepalese. And uh, also to, uh, challenging to find a brief overview of the reporting process in Nepal and to really understand how the process functions in practice and not just on paper. Uh, it really helped us to have a man on the ground, if you can say it like that, that Prem from Coppola, that had a, a lot of experience from the reporting process with the survivors. So that helped us a lot. Uh, I will also briefly say some of the limitations of our project. We had a time limitation, of course, we had five weeks. And also due to other issues like exam, work, academics, it prevented us from really digging deeper to some of the other issues we would have liked to. For example, for making the proper need assessment that could have helped us in adapting the manual. It would, it would also have been preferable to meet with some local survivors and helpers working with them. And uh, we did not have time to do a pilot. So that was, uh, is also one thing that we would have liked to do, uh, have done to really try out the webinar with Nepalese survivors and people or yeah, yes. Uh, it would also have been very interesting to see the evaluation afterwards and see how we can improve the online version. Uh, but we have learned a lot during the whole pro, uh, project and it has been a very steep learning curve, especially for me, that's from Norway. Uh, we have learned so much about HHRI as an organization on how to really work um, in a human rights based approach and also about uh, cultural understandings, differences uh, in between regions, also about cooperation between, uh, between us as group members working on Zoom or on WhatsApp uh, from or in between Norway and Nepal. Uh, we've also uh, reflected a bit about how to do an online webinar, like what are the best ways to uh, meet survivors, to create a good teamwork on Zoom uh, and uh, or with the helpers. And we have gone through like what kind of activities would have been useful so if you are wondering about doing a webinar, it would be interesting to talk more about this and reflect upon how to do it uh, in the best manner. And I will start uh, stop talking now. <laughs> and if you have any questions, feel free to uh, take them now. We have also uh, some resources that we can show you, of course. And we also have available some slides from the bo both of the webinars, but I'm not sure if we will go into this now or if it might be more useful to have kind of a discussion or feedback or yes, whatever would be um, interesting for you. I would also like to say that uh, uh, Elizabeth and us, we were talking yesterday about how we would have the webinar if it was 13 people, because that was our expectation that we were going to be 13, but we have been almost 50 the whole time. So we are very <laughs> grateful and very happy to have had the honor of having so many participants. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, do you want us to show some of the slides, uh, Elizabeth, or should we skip this? I, I, 
think if, if you'd like to use like uh, one minute, two minutes just to show, because uh, you have spent so much time, you know, both uh, uh, preparing it and also translating it. So the two PowerPoints, they have are, are exactly the same, but they're one in English and one in uh, Nepalese. And um, both uh, PowerPoints and the manual uh, translated in Nepalese is available on our website. So, um, and for freely use. So uh, uh, just quickly just show us a few of the slides. Is it possible, Anil? And just bear in mind that these are all also translated into uh, Nepalese. So I think... Um, and it also follows a manuscript so that you know what to say on the slides, of course. But with the work of the manual as well. Thank you, Anil. I know there is a, um, I think these students have done a fantastic job. And uh, I hope that uh, this can be useful for, for uh, organizations working in Nepal. Uh, I know there are some questions that, um, that I would like to answer, just uh, some immediate questions. And I also think that some of the questions like um, Nora or Helen that I, uh, have uh, done this and I have extensive knowledge on the trauma bit could maybe answer some of the question that is related to, to um, trauma. But uh, what uh, initially is one of the questions is who is this manual for and who is the target group? Uh, the manual is for helpers. So this is a tool for helpers uh, who are working with survivors. So we, we know that the helpers uh, have uh, extensive knowledge of the work that they are doing and are the experts in their field. Uh, so what we are trying to do is, is helping, uh, helping the helpers to acknowledge their uh, own resources and maybe uh, giving them some more tools to work with. And when we're talking about this rollout out plan of the manual, um, the plan is in the sense that we give, give you as organizations or helpers the, uh, the possibility to use the manual freely uh, on your own or, or if you'd like uh, by the help of uh, us. Uh, everything is available on the internet. We have uh, uh, part of the web page is also developed so that you can get more information related to the work. Um, here's another question. Uh, I was wondering with the regards to the trauma treatment, my uh, the understanding is that it's very hard to treat trauma victims without removing trigger and dangerous situation first. And do you also work with the perpetrators and safe space, et cetera? Uh, Nora, maybe you can say something about the trauma. Yes, thank you. And first of all, I want to I want to to thank to thank the three of you for a very great presentation. The last time in, in Oslo, I was both extremely moved and very impressed at the way that you had handled this and adapted it into Nepalese and lifted up so many so many highlights and important aspects and i think for us also it has been a very great learning that we will take into our work uh, in the continuation with the manual um, as one of the questions also relates to to the training of three days and and then afterwards uh, uh, help to to trauma victims i want to say two words the the three days training is is the way that it's portrayed in the ma in the manual itself as an optimal way and of course, three days is a lot of time 
on one hand and it's short on another. But we have often experienced that sometimes we, we only have one day at our disposal and then we have to take pieces and bits, the most important parts of the manual. We even had presentations online for three hours where we've had to, to, to shorten it. So, so I would say that, um, yes, we have been given the presentation of three days, but in situations where this is not possible, I would say feel free to, to use shorter versions and, and speci specific aspects that you would like to include in your own training in Nepal or any other place. Then as for the, the help with, um, uh, with, the, with the person who has been affected, that can never be standardized in any way. But what we usually say is that we're speaking to persons who are not professional helpers necessarily. They are or not psych psychologically or psychiatrically trained, but people who give support and advice. And of course, that can be an ongoing way of, of dealing with them inspired by the, the manual, or you may see people for sessions, two or three sessions or more, if, if that's possible. So this will all depend on, on the motivation and uh, the situation of the survivor, as well as the possibilities you as a helper have to give, to give any assistance. As for the, the, um, the manual, we have had a very clear focus on the survivors. That does not mean that the perpetrators are not in any situation where they need help. But we, I've, at least from my own work with torture victims, I've, I've found that it's, it's important that I concentrate on the, on the, the victims, the survivors, and then, of, and then try to find another agency or other helpers to deal with the perpetrators. The combination may be quite difficult, both for you as a helper and also for those that you're helping in case, for instance, they should even meet each other in the waiting room or uh, any, any, uh, any similar circumstances. But definitely trauma or perpetrators of trauma are often severely traumatized themselves also. That's another aspect. As for safe place, uh, uh, we, we will not, of course, have any availability of any physical, um, physical safe place. But psychologically, this is one of the I would say one of the metaphors or one of the ideas that runs through the manual, hopefully to create some kind of safe space for the person uh, so she can deal with her, her trauma and her, her yeah, triggers, etc. Well, this is uh, in brief a comment to some of those very relevant questions. So back to you, Elizabeth. And thank you again. Well, thank you, Nora. Uh, I know there are some um, uh, some questions uh, here. If if you have more questions, please um, write it in the chat, or or of course you can uh, uh, write us later. Um, you will find the, the contact information on the website. I know that um, I've seen some. Um, uh, uh, I, I've seen that uh, Heidi is with us to, uh, today. I'm not sure whether she is ready for this already, but she has done uh, two trainings or maybe three trainings in Nepal already based on this manual. And she has a, a extensive experience in this. I don't know if she's uh, ready uh, to say just two words. I haven't prepared her for anything or that, or maybe she can just, uh, be available if you need uh, more information from her on the, the physical training. Uh, Heidi, are you there? Yes, uh, I'm here. Can you Hi. see me? <laughs> yes, I can see you. <laughs> oh, you can see me. Yes. Hello, everyone. Well, I'm just very impressed by all your work and all this fantastic work by the, by the students and the university people. And of course, by Prem. And I did three trainings in Nepal in Pokhara. And two of them uh, was, uh, you know, in um, working together with Prem. So I think, um, you know, he was the expert there and uh, I brought the manual to them. But of course, Prem was the expert on the local women there uh, and everything like that. So I was more like a helper coming from outside and just uh, maybe testing the manual on them. Uh, 
just have a comment that I felt that the people in the workshop understood the, the window of tolerance. Um, I felt the helpers I was helping, uh, they understood it. So that is a comment I have to the presentation that I felt that they understood the window of tolerance in the, in the words that were used there. I don't know if Sam has any, or any, any comment to that. Uh, um, I'm not sure whether Prem is. Uh, is he there? I don't. I haven't seen him present. Okay. Yeah. So, but uh, I know that he's been of great help for the the group. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. It is possible that I got the impression that they understood it, but maybe they didn't. That it was just my impression. <laughs> but I felt that they they could get they got that uh, part of it. As you said before, of course, this this manual is for the for the helpers. Yep. Yeah. For the helpers. But I I, yeah. I I also have the same impression when I've been talking to to yeah. Prem, and Prem has been the one translated translating the the manual into Nepalese, and he says that it, it's um, because the diversity of Nepal, the language uh, needed to be more simple that that is also the intention of the manual that the, the language is supposed to be available for everyone so uh, i hope that this is uh, this translation is, is uh, useful even though i know there are some reactions uh, but i think it might also be due to the uh, diversity of nepal but i'm looking forward to hear your your um, experience from from of the manual and using it, the use of it. I think there was um, um, there was one hand that had been. Uh, before that, can I answer one of the question, Elizabeth? Sure. sure. Yeah, there is a question uh, from Norris. Thank you, Norris, for your feedback and question. Yeah, uh, uh, as a <coughs> male, <coughs> sorry, as a male-dominated society, women are very much restricted to household work uh, in in Nepal. And they are uh, restricted from the education and other uh, employment opportunities. So it is very important uh, to get them to the education. And uh, even from the organization did the uh, <coughs> did the some of the work in different places of Nepal. Uh, initially, they had, they were just involving women uh, uh, to manage these problems. But after that, they have uh, involved male also. So initially, the male were really reluctant to come to the sessions and the awareness campaigns. But uh, later, they were uh, also joining the uh, those programs to prevent the domestic violence. And the result were really uh, found uh, very significant change after the training program. So involving male also a very uh, very important aspect. So uh, we all have to uh, help them to the survivors uh, to get the justice and to prevent the domestic violence and all those things. Uh, yeah, so we all have some equal role uh, to prevent this. And uh, we can do uh, this by various ways, like sharing the roles in home, uh, getting them to the equal education, employment, uh, and uh, in higher positions also. Uh, yeah, that that could be the some, some of the ways to I think uh, male can play a significant role to change the scenario. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for those words, Daniel. That's really um, important issues to bear in mind as well. Uh, I think before we are uh, closing, I think Uni wants to say a few words and also uh, Helen afterwards. Yes, I, I, I just want to once again congratulate the student with this very useful and excellent uh, result. And also want to thank uh, uh, mental health and, and human rights information for setting up this meeting. So from the University of Berg and the Center for Crisis Psychology, thank you so much to all of you. Thank you, Uni. And uh, Helen? Can I just say thank you to Uni because Uni made all of this possible for us, so we have to thank, thank her. <laughs> if it wasn't for Uni and Rangni, we would never have been here today, so not that we would have been dead, but we would not be in this uh, <laughs> webinar at least, so thank you very much. Helen, please. 
Yeah, I also want to thank you for a wonderful presentation. I'm one of the authors of this manual and I have been implementing it in several countries and I've also been in, uh, in Nepal the last seven years for several times each year and also presented this manual to, to some of the organizations in, in Nepal and also with Kupula in, uh, in, in, in Pukhara. Um, so I am interested in a collaboration in the future, how to implement this even more into uh, Nepal. And I also wanted to underline that we are also working on a manual addressing men who are exposed to, to sexual violence. And, or, and I'm also responsible for uh, developing a manual uh, addressing children who are exposed to sexual abuse and there I'm working with we are working with uh, also with some Nepali psychologists uh, so we would like to be in touch with you in the future and to uh, to see how we can implement it even further into and together with the organizations I've I've presented it at UMN and several other organizations who have shown interest in, in being part of an implementation strategy. So thank you again. Well, wonderful to see how you have contextualized it. I love that part of it, especially. Thank you. Thank you, Helen, for those uh, words and, and also for reminding us that uh, uh, the work is continuing <laughs> in many ways. Uh, we have a question from Sarin here. Uh, um, the question is, uh, we know that the, the, the work of GBV is multi-faced and uh, layered and the survivors need a lot of support. Um, what we have thought about when we were writing this manual was that this was supposed to be a low threshold um, tool so that uh, helpers in places where where they don't have easily access to uh, psychologists or psychiatrists they can use this as as a, i don't know first thing maybe yeah something like that and and um, of course if if the, the survivor needs uh, more um, train, not training, but treatment, or uh, and have and they and they have access to that. That is, of course, wonderful. But this is uh, this is something for the helper that are meeting the survivors on on a regular basis and and maybe don't have access to a trained psychologist or trained psychiatrist. Maybe Nura. And you want to add something? No, thank you. I think uh, your additional comments and 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 uh, Helen also reminding us of uh, of the other ongoing work uh, is uh, is good. So I just want again to to thank everybody that have made this possible, and especially to to Gita, Alba, and Anil. And we really, really hope that from this we can move on to active courses and implementations. Of And, uh, and consultant to, to reach out to when people need some, uh, some update to this training. So thank you, thanks again, and thanks to all the participants and really good luck with this collective efforts of all of us to fight, to fight the violence and repair it as much as we can. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone. I think, oh, Ella. <laughs> Ella. <laughs> Hello, I didn't find the raise the hand button, so I just tried it on the camera. Uh, I'm Elin, I'm working for Forut, and we have two partners in Nepal, and they most of them are joining here today. And I would really like to thank you very much for this opportunity to present the manual directly to them, because we want to find a way to implement this, uh, this manual in their work, if they are interested. Um, and we did a pilot last year in India, and we had to do some of the same 
ad adaptions to the cultural context of India as you have done for Nepal. And I think that's it's wonderful and it's very interesting how uh, it was the same thing you had to adapt. Like uh, um, in India, we also had to change the window of tolerance and to the river of emotional tolerance, for example. And we also had to change the name of the butterfly woman until uh, into Irani, which was a name of a queen in India. And uh, so it's very interesting. And I would really like to get in touch with you uh, to talk more about how we can try to implement this. Uh, also, if it's possible to do it online next year, because we are not sure if we can go to Nepal this coming year due to the corona situations. But um, it was really nice talking to you and I will like to keep in touch with uh, all of you that have been doing this work with maybe Alba, if you are living in Norway, it's more easy. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ellen, for those uh, nice uh, words. Uh, I think we have reached our time limit. I know that uh, you might have some other questions and please, uh, send us an email if you if you are uh, interested in learning more. Uh, use the manual if you can fi uh, find it useful in the work that you're doing. Uh, if this had been a uh, physical meeting, I think after this session now we would have gone to lunch and we would have been able to talk more and discuss you know further plans or where we could collaborate. But I hope that uh, if you need to get in touch with each other, you can do it uh, through HHRI or, or um, and we will find the means to share information. You can also, I know that in the event, there is a discussion event thing on Facebook. You can also post things there and I can forward it if, it, if uh, that is easier. So uh, I would like to thank you very much for, um, for everyone that has spent this last hour together with us. We really uh, appreciate it. And we hope that this can be a fruitful co collaboration for more people. So, um, uh, the, I think um, email addresses and everything that is needed you can write to me and I will forward it to Anil and uh, and uh, Alba and uh, Gita. So thank you very much and uh, have a safe uh, week and uh, joyful holidays for those uh, who are celebrating Christmas and take care and happy new year. And we hope that it will be a COVID free uh, year, maybe. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye.